Hi, and welcome back to this Friday edition of Focal Point on AFR Talk. We will go to the free-for-all Friday edition of Focal Point in the second hour. But what I want to do uh, in this quarter hour is take phone calls from women in this listening audience reacting to what Governor Mike Huckabee said yesterday at the RNC. The mainstream media went ballistic on Governor Huckabee. It feeds into their narrative that the Republican Party is engaged in this war on women, this war against women. And this is what Governor Huckabee was dealing with. He was responding to this charge that the Republicans are engaging in a war on women. And Governor Huckabee was trying to put, to take that conversation in a positive direction and talk about the effort on the part of the Republican Party to engage in a war on behalf of women, uh, for women. So I want to listen, have you listen again to what he said. I'll have Rob play that clip one more time. And then I want to have you, uh, I want to take uh, responses from you, f- from the women in our listening audience. How do you react to what Governor Huckabee had to say? Do you think he was insulting to women? Let's listen. I, I think it's time Republicans no longer accept listening to the Democrats talk about a war on women. Because the fact is, uh, the Republicans don't have a war on women. They have a war for women, for them to be empowered to be something other than victims of their gender. Women I know are outraged that the Democrats think that women are nothing more than helpless and hopeless creatures whose only goal in life is to have the government provide for them birth control medication. Women I know are smart, educated, intelligent, capable of doing anything that anyone else can do. Our party stands for the recognition of the equality of women and the capacity of women. That's not a war on them, it's a war for them. And if the Democrats want to insult the women of America by making them believe that they are helpless without Uncle Sugar coming in and providing for them a prescription each month for birth control because they cannot control their libido or their reproductive system without the help of the government, then so be it. Let us take that discussion all across America because women are far more than the Democrats have played them to be. And women across America need to stand up and say, enough of that nonsense. And I think it's time we lead that discussion. Now, obviously, what Governor... Huckabee said was well received by those there at the RNC. They liked hearing what he said. They didn't see anything controversial in this. It was only when the mainstream mainstream media distorted and twisted what he said that this thing became a controversy. You know, Governor Huckabee said today, look, I said the same thing last week on my program and there was no reaction on my television program on Fox. There was no reaction whatsoever. It was only when his words got twisted and bent out of shape that the controversy began. Well, let's go to the phones. I'd like to know what you think as a woman. Uh, was Governor Huckabee insulting to women? What's your reaction? 888-589-8840. 888-589-8840. Let's go to Jenny in North Indiana. Uh, Jenny, welcome. What's on your mind? Well, I do not think he was insulting at all. And my, truthfully, what I think it is, the whole thing is it's against the young people because the young people don't take any responsibility, male or female. I think that's why it's being pushed. But his speech definitely was not against women. It was for women. Well, you know, it's interesting to me, too, because, because what, what Governor Huckabee was saying, look, is the, the political group that kind of caters to irresponsibility are liberals. They adapt to that. They adjust to that. They think that young people, as you point out, whether male or female, that they are helpless, that they are incapable of taking care of themselves. They're incapable of assuming responsibilities for their own sexual expression, for their own uh, provision, for their needs. They're, they're, they're not able to do that. They're are helpless not, no and utterly independent. To do that. Yeah. No desire to do that. Yeah. Well, and I think, our, you know, a conservative point of view believes in the capacity of, of individuals, both male and female, of whatever age, to accept appropriate level of responsibility for their own lives. All right, Jenny, I appreciate the call. Thank you for that. Uh, let's go to Fanny in Tellum, Tennessee. Fanny, what did you think about Governor Huckabee's comments? Uh, well, first of all, I want to thank you for having me on your show. I uh, I was not offended uh, at all. I actually applaud him hmm. for standing up. And, uh, of course, I am 
female. <laughs> and, uh, now, now let me ask you this, Fanny. You said you, you, you want to stand up and applaud. What did you like about what Governor Huckabee said? You, you liked what he said. What was it about what he said that you liked? Well, about the women that he knows are smart. I mean, we're smart enough to, um, of course, he doesn't know me personally, but smart enough to take responsibility of our bodies, you know, and not to use necessarily, uh, he didn't say this, but I kind of assumed that not to use our, our tax dollars for birth control and, and or uh, abortion. You know, I, mm-hmm. I think some women are starting to use, um, it's too easy. They're starting to use abortion as birth control, and they shouldn't. Um, well, and I, so think other, it, yeah, I think it's kind of an implication of what Governor Huckabee was saying, because he was talking about how the Democrats view, view women. You know, and you pointed out, Fanny, that what he said in there, women I know are smart, educated, intelligent, capable of doing anything that anyone else can do. How can you, how can you get something demeaning and insulting out of that is beyond me. But he said it's, it's the Democrats that are insulting women because they think that women are incapable of managing life without government-provided birth control. Uh, and so the Democrats seem to think that women are incapable of, uh, of self-control. Conservatives don't believe that. We believe that uh, human beings are free moral agents. They can maintain control of their sexual impulses. They're not some kind of lower order of life form that's just sort of driven by n- natural impulses and not a thing they can do about it. We believe that men and women are moral creatures and, and have a capacity to exercise appropriate self-control. And Huckabee's point is if anybody doesn't believe that, if anybody has a degraded view of human capacity, it would be liberals. That's correct. And, and in his way of saying the women I know, and then he's throwing all the women of America as of, you know, shouldn't they be just like the women I know? I think they are. They have the capacity you know, he, he to be like He has faith that. in the women of America. Yeah. All right, good. Well, I appreciate that, Fanny. You know, that's a good way to put it. You know, what Fanny was saying, he has faith in the women of America. He believes in them believes in their capacities and their capabilities, and it's the liberals that don't. It's liberals that believe that women are, are helpless without the intervention of the government. Let's go to Shelley, West End, North Carolina. Uh, Shelley, welcome to Focal Point. Shelley, what's on your mind? Well, um, I'm not a Mike Huckabee fan, really. Um, now, tell I'm, me, uh, just before we get any further, tell me why. Why are you not a Mike Huckabee fan? I just don't think he's, he's strong enough. I think in the when he was running before... I, I think the word milk toast sort of comes to mind when I think of Mike Huckabee. So you you you'd like somebody that's a little bit stronger and and firmer and more kind of of a rock when it comes to our values. Exactly. I want somebody who says what they mean and there's no wiggle room. All right. Now, what's your reaction to what Governor Huckabee said about women yesterday? Now, I totally agreed with what he said, and that's you know, like I said, I'm not a Huckabee fan, but. You know, it, it seems to me that the liberal mindset reduces women almost to the status of a prostitute. Mm-hmm. We are just a reproductive organ, but they don't want us to reproduce. So it's all about giving us birth control so they can, so men can have that sexual contact with us with no repercussions. There's no value on marriage. There's no value on family and home. It's all about do what feels good right now, and nobody has any consequences. Mm. Well, you know what you're, t- what you're touching on there, Shelley, is a pretty profound cultural dynamic, and this goes beyond even what Governor Huckabee said yesterday, to the larger issue of, of the impact that contraception has had on all the issues you're talking about. Because what contraception did, birth control pill, it removed procreation from the sex act. And it was a way to say you can have... Sex with no consequences. Now we know there are consequences. There are broken hearts. There are sexually transmitted diseases. There's no 100% surefire protection against pregnancy, so you're going to get unwanted crisis pregnancies. We know all that. But that was kind of the idea. Finally, you can have risk-free sex. And then what that meant, Shelley, if guys can have risk-free sex, uh, they can have a girl on a pill, so she's not going to run the risk of getting pregnant. If she does get pregnant he can take her for an abortion, then he has no reason to commit himself to her. So the guy is the one who gets most of the benefits out of this, and the woman is the one who was left abused and misused, her body surgically invaded to remove a life in her. So it hasn't worked out to be sexually liberating for women at all, as far as I can see. Any last word, Shelley? 
think you're exactly right. I think in a lot of ways it's made women basically sexual pawns mm-hmm. in, in a much bigger game, and it's taken out the advantage that women used to have of the security of, of home and family because now, you know, there, there isn't that. Men are not growing up. They're 25 and 30 years old and still just playing, and they're, they're just there's no societal encouragement for our young men to grow up and step up and be a man and say, hey, I'm ready to get married because I have this drive and I want a natural, godly outlet for it. So you've got women that are hitting 30 and 32 and 34, and there's no grown-up men around. Mm. Well, you know, and part of that is, you know, this is the liberal mindset that we can separate sex from procreation and from responsibility. It can be kind of casual. It can be risk-free. And uh, uh, the, the reality then is, you know, it used to be before the, before the pill came along, before contraception came along, where uh, a, a woman who had high standards in terms of sexual expression, she could say to somebody, to a male that she cared for and that she was interested in, maybe even interested in building a life with, says, look, I'm reserving sex for marriage. You know, I'm interested in marriage. I would like to have a family. I would like to have a family with a guy that's really committed. And so you need to understand there isn't going to be any sex in this relationship before a, a wedding date. And then what happens is it raises the bar for the guys. They got to step up to the plate. They have to understand there isn't there isn't anything that's given away for free here. If I would like to enjoy a lifetime of sexual intimacy with this woman, which I might want to do, I'm going to need to commit to her. I'm going to need to provide for her, and I'm going to need to provide for the children that we have together. If you take that out of the equation, then you get exactly what you're talking about, Shelley. This prolonged adolescence on the part of American males. And then women wonder, why can't I find a decent guy? Focal Point AFR Talk will be back after the news. Stay with us.